way, you know? You'd already be, uh, originally, like and for thousands of years when these medicines were in operation, you'd already, societies would, you know, people would be living in a, in a certain kind of way, pretty much everywhere. Do you, do you see what I mean? Whereas now we've got, a, we've got a, a, a situation now where a lot of the way that we live, that we're living, that's normal, you know, normal life is actually quite unhealthy. Mm. It's actually creating disease. And that's quite a... Uh, um, you know that's quite a sobering thought and it's also as probably all of us or at least many one of us that's ever tried to change anything in ourselves it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not an easy job it's quite a big job to make changes and uh, so so these are these strands that were coming together and then the other strand that came was they did this lecture another lecture and it's in Ayurveda they say that they recognise certain levels of, of what you need to be well so the first thing is about your basic lifestyle and how you look after yourself. And that would include, for them, that included sort of home knowledge of herbs, which you, which in every culture except for a modern Western one pretty much was, or, or actually it's not just Western, it's when people go into cities that then it gets lost, that knowledge. But that was common knowledge. Everyone would know what herbs to, to have for you know, minor ailments at home. And in fact, you just would have herbs in... Like the Mediterranean diet, it's so healthy. It's not just olive oil and garlic, which is what all the focus is on. It's all the herbs, fresh herbs every day. You know, that's those aromatic herbs. All of them are very, very helpful. So that's the foundation for, for your health is, is self-care, you could say. And then the next thing, if, if you're ill or something goes wrong, then you might go and see a herbalist and get some medicine and have extra thing. And if that isn't enough, then you go and have the thing that I was there having where you lie there and get oil poured all over you for an hour every day which is absolutely lovely or you know pounded with big bags of herbs or whatever they've got lots of i'm simplifying it but they've got lots of you know, they they diagnose you what do you exactly need and they do it and if that isn't enough if that doesn't work to sort out your problem then they've got drugs and surgery chemotherapy they call it but what chemo we think of chemotherapy oh it's cancer isn't it but chemotherapy is actually Actually, any all the medicine, modern medicine, pretty much everything you get from the doctor these days for us is chemotherapy in terms of it's it's a drug. It's a and the reason that they had it as their last resort, and they did have they did have keep they did have uh, complicated and powerful, I'm gonna say drugs, you know, substances that they use like as drugs, and they also had quite sophisticated surgery, you know, thousands of years ago in, in uh, Ayurveda. So but that's the last resort because when you have when you use those kinds of medicine, it always takes a toll on the body. There's always a price to pay later. So so all this was you know ranging around in my mind, and then and then and I, whilst I was trying to relax, you know, I was relaxing actually. It was very <laughs> nice. It was it was really nice like to just to do nothing for a while, and uh, and then I got almost like a download. The whole idea for this book came. Oh, and I was like, oh, because I thought we need something extra. This is the thing. These ancient, they're amazing, these systems. And of course, what, you know, you, if you can go there, it's wonderful. But then you come home and you've still got to live somehow, you know. And, uh, and so I thought the traditional healing paradigms, they're awesome. You know, they really like, we, really, we, we sort of brought up to disrespect them, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We kind of brought up and educated in, in the UK, at least, to... to I mean, I think in, in, in Northern Europe and America, we're edu North America, we're educated to have real deep disrespect for anything that happened before very modern science. We're actually educated to, to be completely disrespectful to other cultures that aren't, you know, ours. Science is like the new god, actually, isn't it? And it, you don't, you don't, you, you get mostly um, ridiculed rather than burned at the stake nowadays, if you follow that, a different god, but anyway... So, but we've got some very distinct problems in our society, in our in our world, and the, the traditional societies generally didn't have. So, the first one I've said it already. Really, that's that that's that's that a lot of what is considered normal normal life for us is actually really unhealthy. So that includes sort of standard diet. A lot of the ways that most many of us eat now is not a good healthy diet. It's very heavy on. A refined it's called the western diet actually and it was it began as a result of industrialization and the and the invention of machines that could refine flour so much that it would it would break all the 
all the um, little oil sacks would get broken in the in the grain and therefore it wouldn't go off on the shelf so you could have it on the shelf for ages so it's obviously good for shops and merchants and capitalism or you know and city living and the big spread of the kind of way we live now but it destroys all of the um uh vitamin you know you get flour and it's fortified but the reason it's fortified is because everything's been is gone from it because it was processed in the first place you don't need to fortify grains they're absolutely full of vitamins minerals essential fatty acids all sorts of nutrients but all whenever you see anything in a packet and it's fortified mineral vitamins don't think oh yeah that's healthy think that must be crap because it's been the reason they needed to fortify it is because it's been absolutely bleached of any proper food content to start with and actually when i say bleached that isn't just a euphemism they literally do use bleach and other highly scary industrial chemicals in modern day food processing um in fact the book i started to write that came in the download was had had a chapter by chapter breakdown of how the things we're doing that are really unhealthy but i did seven i did one on the food the modern food industry I did one on the, the drug, the pharmaceutical, modern medicine, what's going on now. I did one on, I don't know, this, that and the other. And I was so depressed after, like, I'm laughing, but I really was. Because I, I, I hadn't looked that hard for a long time. And I was like, oh, wow, this is even worse than I, than I knew. And I've known it was bad. So I had to sort of shelve that. book's still there. It'll be a series of depressing essays. You know? <laughs> I'll probably put them on the internet with the health warning, you know, like... No, the whole the idea was that that would be there, and then it would be like, now nah, here's some real detailed stuff about what we could do about it, how we can address it. But it really is like the food is a massive issue, and another huge issue, another huge obvious thing about the way that we live that's unhealthy that I think everyone sort of knows is how stressed, how much stress there is in our lives. Stress has become like it's become normal, you know. In fact, it's so sort of some sources of stress are so prevalent and i'm going to say normal in the sense they've been there all the time we can't even tell that they're stressful you know that, that, that it's like it's a major and that has stress has a very particular biological physiological effect on the body which causes which creates disease of all kinds so um those are two just simple examples so basically we don't get our human needs met we don't get them properly met in our by our culture even though our culture is lovely and we get to sit in a nice warm room and you know do interesting things and buy lovely books we don't get our human needs met properly so i'm going to have a little read of something So what we need for optimum health is simple in the sense that it's completely natural. At the same time, it can be a complicated business to get it because in the 21st century, the majority of us are living in a way that is not supported with balance. This is a problem of the outer world, the environment, and the inner world, the condition of our minds and hearts. It can be that we're completely cut off from an environment con conducive to health. Actually, that's the truth for the majority. It's possibly true for a majority of the world's population. You know, um, I mean, the, the number of people in the world that are, that are in abject poverty and don't even have water and a, and a clean toilet, you know, and a, and a way for them to be separate. It's like half, half the world's population or something. So it's like, it's completely... Uh, but, but it's also true for many of us in, in, in uh, the northern west, you know, industrialised countries where we're, we're, we've got... Anyway, sorry, I'm trying to read and not blabber on. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it can also be that we're unable to make healthy choices for ourselves, even though we have access to such choices. That's often the case for, well, for me, and probably for some of you as well. Our basic needs for the body include sufficient clean water and wholesome food, containing all the nutrients we need, good quality air to breathe, and the right amount of exercise and movement. For our minds, hearts and bodies, we need meaningful work and joyful play with a good balance between the two. I mean, you can see straight away that like most people don't have that. I mean, actually, look, some people in this room go to school. How horrendous is school? You know, this is this is the way we grow up. We've all been to, most of us here have been to school and we probably can remember. 
You know, you're sat down most of the day. Do you know, I'm going to have a little rant, brief rant. In, in the high school here, they have, they get, they've got seven lessons of maths in two weeks and, and three lessons of PE. You know, to me, that is like, it's like, and we're living in a world, it's absolutely common knowledge, government policies and think tanks and everything about that we've got obesity and people aren't, and heart disease that's caused by not enough movement. Oh, you know, it, it's not joined up, is it? Anyway, that's my rant about school. Yeah, I mean, I'm just pointing out it starts right from the beginning, right from the beginning. We're, there's an unhealthy balance. We need right relationships. That means loving, really good, loving closeness with other humans on an individual and a community level. We don't only need that within our own homes and our own friendships, but we need it in the, in the whole community. That's, that's what is healthy for humans. Um, and we need deep connection to and awareness of nature, including plants and animals and the land that where we live. Which I and I've put and spiritual connectedness, but for me they're related, closely related, the connection with nature and the, and the kind of spiritual energetic connection. And we also need access to healing when we're hurt. Because even if we lived in an ideal world, we're still going to get hurt. Hurt's going to happen. Unfortunately, we've got this amazing you know organism that we are we've got all sorts of healing mechanisms that if they were allowed to they can flourish and move us in the right direction of health okay so the aim of the book is to offer examples of daily practices or not necessarily daily that are geared towards supporting the health of our bodies minds and spirits to help find your own path to health and well-being doesn't mean you're going to do everything that's in there because all, of, all that's the other thing is what the, like, I just want to say one thing about if we're thinking about health, what does it mean to be fully healthy? Like that is that is we've each got our own definition of what that would mean for us. Like it depends on all sorts of things. It depends on you know we some people have got genetic things going on or have got just we're ill. There's a, you can be ill and still be healthier or or less healthy. Do you see what I mean? We've all got different things, different sort of challenges or whatever we're all different ages we all need something different although there's common denominators with the whole thing but that means that it's not okay just to say here one size fits all everyone do this it's it, this thing about us learning to find ourselves and feel ourselves is really important and the crucial thing is that is that self-acceptance and and connecting and going on our internal experience huh. are we all right so far yeah Scared. I'm scared. Okay, next. Right, so that's physical. We're not getting our physical, we're not, we're no. That is, we're living in a, an unbalanced way. You know, some of the things that are normal, that we've grown up with, actually that our parents grew up with, actually that have been going on for centuries, some of them are really deeply unhealthy for us. So that's quite a sobering thought. Then my next thing, which this is not true of most of the intact indigenous cultures that i know about they they, they they are we live in an incredibly emotionally repressed culture we might not even fully realize how repressed it is because we're so repressed that we immediately suppress any emotion that we have as soon as it starts to try and come up you know that is what we're actually required to do from pretty much from birth and this has a lot of far-reaching effects on our, on our lives and on our health, including our mental health and our physical health. And it also, like, the not being able to express our feelings freely cuts us off from what is effectively the best cure for stress. So uh, this is something... Now, I've seen it, because, I, you know, in India, I've seen it, like, uh, I think about the Bengali people that I've hung out with. They're, if they're upset, they just cry their head off, like, right away. Men, women, everyone. Wow! you know big load of crying and then it's all gone you know or they're like and they have massive like ah shouty kind of you know whereas if that happened to you you think oh my god you know is it going to be something serious is happening but it's just that there's just much more of an expression of feelings they expect feelings are like energy they're like they rise up they need to be expressed and they're gone but they rise up in us and we suppress them often so effectively we don't even know we're doing it and then they're not gone then we've got a big storage carton of them you know 
anyway, there we go. And the ne next, another problem we've got, which the ancient, the older cultures didn't have, is that our communities are fragmented. And there's a massive, more and more and more of us are isolated from each other in various ways. And there's lots of reasons for that. That's, that was happening anyway. And then um, historically, many reason, many things that have you know divided people over centuries actually, and it's got really ramped up in in the last sort of since TV actually, <coughs> TV and now computers, it's got really ramped up because you don't actually have to go anywhere to talk to anyone. You can just go like this, like this, or you know. So it's a big problem. Probably most of us are aware of you know we might like to have more of something that we haven't got. Anyway, and we're cut off. I mean, I'm repeating myself, but we're cut off from nature. The modern world cuts us off from nature, and that's a huge source of, of um, health and inspiration and balance for all of us. And then the last thing, which we've got a problem with, which these older cultures didn't have, and is that we, although we've got amazing technology, amazing technology in our modern world, but we've got an almost complete lack of understanding of anything to do with energetic or spiritual stuff. Um, and actually our culture, our modern cultures are the only human culture anywhere that doesn't have that, doesn't have an understanding, some kind of paradigm or way of thinking about energy and the, the spirit that and understanding that disturbances in energy and the spirit can create problems, including ill health, disease. So... Um, Okay, so all indigenous cultures, they all recognise health as being connected. It's not just your own, like if you're ill, it's not just about you. It's like it's connected with you and your, what you're doing, but it's also connected with your family, your immediate family, your community, your tribe, you know, your, and the, and the place, the land, the whole, the, you know, the, the tribe that is all the trees and the plants and the insects and the flowers and, and the, actually, and the weather god and the, the rain and the and the clouds and the sun and everything in nature. So that's the kind of laying out bit of the problem that we've got. And then we so we need to, often we're not that we're not as well as we'd like to be. And we need to change things, and it's not easy. Like I said, it's not easy to change things. So, so, so but sometimes we can find some small thing that we can change. And if we can make that one, we change one small thing, it can change the whole direction. It can get us started on a road that can lead to other things and other things. And I, I'm going to read another little bit from my book. And there's, because I found this lovely, I think it was Sue here that told me about the trim tab. So a trim tab, right. A trim tab is, hi, Diana, come on in, find a seat. There's seats here at the front or there's, grab a chair, whatever. A trim tab on a massive ship, like a cruise ship or something, a massive ocean-going ship, they have these huge rudders that they steer with, but they're enormous. They're like, I mean, you know, as big as a house, just the rudder. But they've got this tiny little rudder right at the bottom, which is a... You couldn't move this big rudder. It's in the water. You wouldn't be able to, like, you know, you just couldn't do it. It would be impossible. So you move this little rudder that's at the bottom. It's called the trim tab, and that changes the whole direction of a huge ocean-going liner, you know. And that's what we need to find. That's what we're looking for in our lives. So there's, and, and also I know like for some people are really into, like for some of us, it's easier to start on the physical stuff. It makes more sense, you know. And for some of us, it, the emotional area is where we need to start. And for other people, the spiritual stuff's what they're into. But for other people, the spiritual stuff just sounds like a load of woo-woo crazy stuff. And they're like, it turns you off. So my, what I'm suggesting for everybody is that you find... We all need to find our own little trim tab, you know, what we what we would need. It's like, yeah, whichever strand of self-care is the easiest route for you to enter a place of deep caring for yourself, go with it. In some ways, it's about finding the trim tab needed to turn your life. Moving the small trim tab is easy, but it builds a pressure that causes the whole ship to change. So we just need to find, because we've got to start with self-love caring for ourselves because what we most of us start with beating ourselves up actually or when we're not beating other people up i mean i'm not necessarily talking you know fisticuffs but we're very good on being hard on ourselves most people and um, it doesn't help actually if you're hard on yourself if you change from a place of being hard on yourself it's never you can't sustain it it doesn't help at all it's like you could have a big you know that's like these new year's resolutions it's like right 
I'm going to do it, and then you manage it, and then you feel you can't do it, and then you feel even worse about yourself and beat yourself up even more. It's like it's not the way to do it. It's like just, just if you just start, if you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to try and build a bit more love for myself and care, and then you might find one small thing that is doable, even in your busy, overwhelming life, and uh, and then that helps you, just helps to open the door. Uh, so... So we're going to connect. So we're going to, we're going to do a little exercise, which is called saying hello to yourself on page seven of the book. So you're going to sit in comfortably if you can, as comfortably as you can.